Langflow is a great way to build AI applications, including agents, MCP servers, and more, while rapidly iterating using the Visual IDE. In our discussion today, we're going to look at how you can host this so you can expose it over an API and use it in any user interface. And to start with, let's just take a look at Langflow running locally. This is Langflow running locally via this command, docker run port 7860, 7860 Langflow. If you run this command right now, you'll get Langflow running locally like this. This is just local Langflow. And we start a new flow, maybe a basic prompting flow, and that's it. I'm ready. All I need to do is paste an API key and I can chat with this. I can go to the playground and say hello to a chatbot. But if I want to publish this and maybe expose API access, this is only local. So I can't expose this over the internet. Look, it's it's on 0000, which is um, a local host address. This is a loopback address, but it's very similar to local host. This is not going to be accessible over the internet. In this video, we're going to look at how we can expose this over the internet so you can use it anywhere you want. Um, to do that, we're going to look at a number of hosting providers, uh, Flight Control, Fly.io, Render, and Hetzner, if you just have your own um, machine that you can access. To start with, well, let's take a look at a GitHub repo that makes deploying Langflow or hosting Langflow very easy. So this is uh, the repo you're going to want to pay attention to. Uh, Datastacks slash host Langflow on GitHub. It's open source and public. And um, it has instructions, but we'll just walk through it here. What you're going to do is fork this immediately. As soon as you fork it, you'll have your own fork that you can bring to deployment platforms like Flight Control, Render, and more. Let's start by using Flight Control. Flight Control is a wrapper on Amazon Web Services or AWS, and they deploy straight to AWS, but with a nicer developer experience. It's like a nice UI on top of AWS. And the benefit of this is you don't pay very much. You just pay for AWS and you get a nice UI in front of it. It ties together all the IAM rules and all the EC2 machines and everything and just gives you a deployment. So let's start there. What we're going to do is go to our dashboard and flight control and um, we are going to get started. So we'll create a project and we're going to say we connect to our GitHub repository that is our fork. So this is a fork that I just created. It was datastacks, now it's tagesq slash host langflow. And we're going to choose our GitHub repository, tagesq slash host langflow. When I click on this, I have to enter some settings. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to choose my AWS account, which is this one. And I'm going to deploy it in EU Frankfurt because I'm based in Germany. It's just easier, faster that way. So now you can choose a bunch of presets. We're going to build our own uh, because we're using Docker. And we're going to build a web server. And here is where we have to fill in some stuff. So this is going to be a Docker file. And then we need to um, enter a port. So the internal port for Langflow is 7860. The health check path is slash health. Um, and we're going to make sure all our configuration looks. We don't have to do anything else. That's it. And we add the service. Um, we just need one service, really, which is this 2 gigabyte Fargate instance. So we're going to create this project. And it's going to create a way. And in about 12 minutes, we're going to have Langflow deployed to AWS. What are we going to do in 12 minutes? Though? Well, let's go deploy to other targets and um, just have many hosted Langflows in, in, in service of teaching you how to host Langflow. So while this deploys, let's go to fly.io. Fly.io is another um, easy deployment platform. It's really great. And so we're going to go to fly.io, go to our dashboard. And we have no apps yet, so we launch an app. Find a GitHub repository. Again, we just take our fork. So select repository. This is my fork here. Um, we need to customize this a little bit because you need a bit more power than Fly gives you. So again, internal port 7860. And you need a bit more power. So what does that mean? Well, machine sizes. Let's get a performance 2x machine or performance 1x, but I want something fast. And for Langflow, you need a minimum of 2 gigabytes of memory, but we'll do 4 gigabytes here. Why not? And so this is going to go off and deploy. It's not going to take quite 12 minutes, but it will take some time. So while fly.io deploys, let's go look at render.com. Uh, this is render.com. In fact, let's go to render.com and uh, your fastest path to production. Indeed. So let's go to the dashboard and we have nothing. So let's deploy a new web service. Uh, so we'll do new web service. Um, my fork once again. 11 minutes ago. Interesting. Um, the name can be the same. Uh, it's, it is Docker branch. This is all good. The root directory is the repository root. So I'm going to leave that blank. And again, for Langflow, you need a minimum of about two gigs of RAM. So we could choose standard um, one CPU, two gigs of RAM. I'm going to go a bit more power here because I do want it fast. And again, AI workloads, they may require more power. So um, we'll do that. And that's it. And we're going to deploy this web service as well. Um, and it's going to start deploying. All right. So this is now deploying on render. 
Um, again, it's not gonna take it's not gonna take twelve minutes, but will take some time. So what do we have right now? We have flight control deploying. We have fly.io deploying. We have render.com deploying. Let's take a look at one more thing and we'll have four deployments. What we're about to look at is Hetzner. Hetzner is different than all of these because it doesn't give you any help. It just gives you a machine and says, good luck. Here's a machine, here's the IP address, have fun. So we'll deploy this. This is the most low level bare bones way to deploy really anything. And it's also coincidentally probably the cheapest. So let's go to Hetzner. This is Hetzner, it's hetzner.com. And then you're gonna go to cloud or you're just gonna log into Hetzner cloud. Um, this is this is what the dashboard looks like, okay? And so we'll make a new project. We'll call it, um, we'll call it host Langflow. And you can't connect GitHub here because this is, you, you just connect server. So we're gonna create a server and you choose where you want your server. I want it in Nuremberg, your OS, Ubuntu, that's fine. Um, what kind of CPU do you want? Well, I want a one with four gigs of RAM and three vCPUs, that's fine. And that's gonna cost like eight euros a month. Um, I do want a public IP address um, because I wanna expose this over the network. You need to add an SSH key. Okay, how do you do that? Well, if you come to your terminal um, and you just write SSH, SSH keygen, this is the type of encryption and this is your email address um, and you hit enter. You can choose where to save it. I'm gonna save this in my downloads folder. So downloads, uh, and I'll call it HLF for host Langflow. Enter a password, no password. That's it. So I have a key now and I'm going to copy it. So I'm gonna cat uh, downloads slash HLF, the thing I just made dot pub. So I'm the public key and I'm going to copy that key, okay? And now I'll just go paste it here. Cool, Let's say add the SSH key. Um, and we're good. I think I don't need anything else. Cool. And we'll call this host, whatever, host line flow. Why not? And I'm going to create the server. So now it's going to provision the server for me. This doesn't take very long. And I have an IP address, a public IP here. So the server exists. I think it's starting up. Um, while that starts up, let's go look at our other stuff. So let's go back to flight control. Um, flight control right here. Provision night, six minutes left, but it looks good so far. So we're gonna leave that. Let's keep it zoomed in. What about fly.io? Fly.io is launched. Your fly.io launch was a success. Let's visit our app right here. And boom, we have Langflow. How cool. Um, not only do we have Langflow, it's hosted with host-langflow.fly.dev right now. I can create my first flow. Let's do a basic prompting flow. Um, so I'm gonna click on that and here it exists. Again, I just drop my API key and I go to the playground and I can chat. And if I, I can publish an MCP server too, or I can publish API access. And look at this, the URL is now HTTPS host langflow.fly.dev. It's, it's ready, it's ready to be consumed by any front end on fly.io, great. Let's take a look at render.com. What happened with render? Well, it looks like it's still deploying. It's still um, in progress here. And so we'll wait for that. What, so fly.io is the fastest. Now let's go look at um, Hetzner and continue our deployment. I think our server is ready. So let's go here. It's green, which means it's running. So we'll copy this IP address. And now we're going to SSH into it. So we'll SSH with the identity of the key that we just made, which is download slash HLF. And we're going to um, SSH as the root of this IP address. Okay, so do you want to add this to your known hosts? Yes. So now I'm in, I'm as you can see, I'm in root at host Langflow and there's nothing here. I just have Git. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna clone our fork. So if we go to our GitHub um, fork, we're going to get the HTTPS clone code and we'll git clone that. Uh, we'll CD into our fork and we have a bunch of stuff. We're going to go into the BM directory for bare metal. That's what we are now. And we're going to run Docker, but turns out we don't have Docker. So we're going to snap install Docker to install. This is a fresh machine. There's nothing on here. There we go. So now we have Docker. So now I can run Docker compose up because again, look, in our, we have Docker compose here. So what we're gonna do is Docker compose up and that's going to bring up Langflow and a web server called Caddy to expose Langflow over the internet. And so it's gonna quickly download all the stuff. Again, it's a fresh machine. And uh, and very soon, I'm, this is probably gonna take the longest because this is a very large portion of Langflow. It's like about 800 megabytes or something. Um, the fact that we're downloading 800 megabytes though so rapidly is kind of cool. There we go. All right, so everything's ready. Um, Caddy has started 
And now we're waiting on Langflow to start. Langflow will have a different color uh, and identifier. Um, and when Langflow starts, we'll have Langflow exposed. Now, while that happens, um, we've deployed Fly. I think render should be good. Caddy is starting up. This is fine, um, meaning Hetzner is starting up. But let's go take a look now at render.com, which look at this, it's live. And we can click on this, host-langflow.onrender.com. And boom, we've got Langflow. Let's create a flow. Um, this is great. Let's go check the API access and check this out, hostlangflow.onrender.com. So we're two for four. We've deployed on fly.io. We've deployed on render. Let's now try and um, see where our bare metal server is. So we're going to open our terminal. Great, it's running um, on 00007860. So if we go here, get our server IP address, and we're just going to open a new tab with that. Um, will it refuse to connect because we don't have HTTPS yet? It's just HTTP. And if we do that, boom, this is our Hetzner machine. And um, let's go check API access. Look at that. We're on our IP address. Now, you might be wondering, how do you attach a domain to this? Well, if you have a domain, point its A record in the DNS settings to this IP address and you're good. If you want HTTPS, then here's how you do that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna kill this for now. The server is gonna stop. But if you want HTTPS, what you're gonna do is um, edit this caddy file. So if we open caddy file, you see here port 80. If you do port 443, which is HTTPS's port, and your domain's A record is already pointing to this IP address, caddy will automatically give you HTTPS. Okay. It's a bit more involved, but that's how you do it on a bare metal machine. Finally, let's check flight control and AWS. So if we come back to flight control, it's still provisioning with one minute to go. And honestly, this is the this is the thing that's the trickiest with AWS. AWS tends to be cheaper, better at scale, but somewhat slower to provision. Um, when it, it looks like it's just finishing up though, so we're almost there. Um, as soon as it's done, we're gonna have Langflow deployed on AWS as well, and we can take a look. But let's let's just stop and watch this for a second. So I'm just gonna come here and watch. Okay, are you ready? Well, here, this is now deployed to AWS. And if we zoom out a little bit and zoom in over here on this CloudFront link, we click there and we have Langflow running on AWS. Let's create our first flow, basic prompting, and publish this with API access. And there we have a HTTPS CloudFront URL. Um, just like that, we just filled out a form. So what have we done? Well, we've deployed Langflow to four different places, to literally just a bare metal server where it's good luck, to fly.io, render.com, and now AWS via flight control. Um, this is how you can make Langflow accessible over the internet and build great things. If you're wondering about what you can build with Langflow, well, this YouTube channel has a lot of suggestions about that. We also have a blog and social media. Follow us on X and Discord. There's links under the like button for ideas about what you can build and now what you can expose over the internet as MCP servers, AI agents, or more. We can't wait to see what you build and we look forward to being part of the conversation. See you next time.